Okay, today I would like to talk about a, a paper which is called Big Guns Are Watching You Towards Unsupervised Object Segmentation with Off the Shelf Generator Models. These guys are the writers of this uh, 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 paper. So, Andrei Voynov, Stanislav Morozov, and Artem Babanko. So, these guys also wrote another paper. I will also talk a little bit about that paper too, because this paper is actually a byproduct of that paper. This paper is mainly considering an unsupervised object segmentation task with the aid of generator models, in, in other words, GANs. So, um, first of all, uh, as we know, uh, as we observe during the fellowship program, uh, the most important thing is having good data, I mean, rich data. But sometimes labeling and obtaining data is a uh, torture, uh, especially for pixel level labeling. It's very time consuming. Uh, that's why researchers are looking for weakly supervised or unsupervised models. Uh, most of the recent works have designed training processes, which is including guns to solve their tasks. One of them is foreground object segmentation. So it is this one. So for uh, binary segmentation or foreground segmentation task or salience detection uh, means that for each pixel, the aim is to predict if it belongs to the object or to the background. So uh, we are trying to uh, look like pixel level uh, search. Uh, so as I told you that recent works have designed training protocols that include uh, guns to solve the segmentation problems without human labels. Uh, but as we already observed that GANs have many problems, right? So for example, GANs have a non-convergence problem. The model parameters oscillate, destabilize, and then you converge. Or sometimes uh, the generator collapses, uh, which produces limited varieties of samples. Sometimes uh, the gradient diminishes. Uh, the discriminator gets too successful and the generator gradient vanishes and learns nothing, right? And also uh, there's, there can be some imbalance between generator and discriminator. Uh, also, uh, as I already also observed that the GAN models are highly sensitive to hyperparameter selection. So uh, to get rid of these issues, uh, people like big research groups uh, train big GANs. So, uh, as its name suggests, big guns is focused on uh, scaling up the gun models. They in, these include uh, like more model parameters, large batch sizes, and there are some architectural changes on these big guns. So uh, these are some synthetic images that big guns are created. Uh, in this work, they mostly looked at uh, a big big gun model. So this is a, a, a bi-directional gun plus a big gun model. I mean, uh, so um, a deep mind research group like trained this uh, in an unsupervised way on an image net without any labels. And uh, the good, good thing is that its parameters are publicly available. Uh, before going to the actual project, so uh, I would like to um, talk a little bit about like the, what researchers are doing about guns. So it's really interesting for me that to, to see these kind of things. So uh, they want to like lead uh, what they what they generate. So they want to have the power about the images they generate. Um, so, for example, in here, in, at the top, uh, so a series of points can be generated on a linear path between two points in the latent space. And those points can be used to generate a series of images that show a transition between the two generated images. And also, uh, people perform vector arithmetic and achieve target results in the resulting images. Uh, they are looking for semantically meaningful directions. For example, in the below, like the pictures are having some directions like aging and also having eyeglasses. So in this paper, uh, uh, first of all, they don't like uh, train, a, like generate a model for each task. 
they just use uh, the big, big ones, hyperparameters, like the weights all the time. Uh, so this can be obtained automatically. Um, what they did is that they explored the big, big ones, latent space. And these latent space gives them some semantically meaningful directions. Uh, they move these directions, I mean, moving in these directions correspond to human interpretable image transformations, as I told you. So, for example, in their first paper, they uh, come up with these directions, uh, this Cox, for example, and the house, there's a zoom effect that they uh, realize uh, when they uh, like uh, change the directions the latent in the, in the latent space, and also they observe uh, some luminance effect uh, on the images. Oh, in their first paper, they categorize these interpretable directions into three types. For example, uh, geometry like zoom, shift, rotation, texture like background blur, add, adding grasses or sharpness, and color changes like set lighting and saturation. There are also like domain specific, uh, like uh, interpretable directions that I already showed you, like uh, having glasses or sometimes like smiling. So, but these are domain specific, but these are general categories. So, uh, the first paper is well, looking the latent space of big gun, but this paper is looking for the latent space of big big gun. Uh, big big gun is an unsupervised uh, model. So they didn't observe much uh, like interpretable directions. The only thing that they observe is the uh, salience lightening effect. So uh, moving in this, uh, in this direction makes the object pixels lighter while the background pixel becomes darker. Like as you see from the dog and this bird, so uh, despite uh, like big big and is completely unsupervised, its latent space can be used to obtain uh, some salience masks for the generated images. Okay, now what they did. So they take a, a, an image and then it, it's encoded. So by the way, uh, the big big arm model uh, ha is having both a discriminator and a generator also and also have an encoder uh, yeah yeah encoder uh, part that was trained jointly with the generator and maps images to the latent space so here uh, they are taking the image and they map to the latent space and uh, they uh, translate this image, uh, like, uh, like shift this image to the interpretable direction uh, H hash uh, sub BG. And then they generate both these images by using the generator of the model. Uh, and as you see now, you have an image and it's mask, a potential mask. Uh, so, uh, to increase uh, the uh, to increase the uh, like the truthness of the masks, they uh, some they did some filtering yeah. to, to improve their masks. They did some uh, filtering. So one of them is mask size filtering. So in mask size filtering, they put a threshold to exclude the noisy images. And they also did like histogram filtering. In this filtering, they filter out the images that are not contrastive enough. Uh, and in con connected component filtering, they remove visual artifacts from the synthetic data. And uh, so in the last one, though it's a bit tricky, uh, in that method, they make uh, the distribution of the uh, distribution of generated images closer to the particular data set. Uh, Briefly, they sample the codes from the neighborhood of the representations of their data set, like uh, to make the distribution uh, of the generated images closer to the particular data set. Okay, so uh, now here is the general picture. 
Now we have the image and it is potential mask. And they did some filtering to improve the mask, the salience mask. Uh, and then they just train this uh, synthetic data and uh, with this equipped mask, they did a, a like supervised uh, training on this unit, unit model. So the core steps are, are like, first they found uh, big gigant's latent direction responsible for background darkening and foreground whitening. And then uh, they uh, sample real images, embeddings and generate segmentation masks with their shifts. They improve these masks, then they train units with this synthetic data. Okay, so uh, when they train uh, their model on the synthetic data, first of all, they train uh, existing image to image CNN architecture, these unit architectures, by using large amounts of synthetic data in, a, in the fully supervised regime, because like right now, like uh, creating synthetic data is easier for them. Uh, in, and in all their experiments, they employ the, like this unit architecture. Uh, so compared to the unsupervised alternatives, the training of their model is extremely simple and doesn't include a large number of hyperparameters. The only hyperparameters are batch size, learning rate, schedule, and a number of optimizer steps, and they tune them on the holdout validation set of synthetic data. Okay, so they... Uh, like look at uh, some uh, different tasks. Uh, first of all, they uh, they look at like object detection, uh, object segmentation, sorry. So uh, in this object segmentation, okay, so, so first I will talk about salience detection, sorry. So in salience detection, they uh, use this F measure uh, metric so it's a very well-known established measure in the studies and detection literature. It's basically a combination of recall and precision. Uh, and also they use uh, intersection over union metric. Uh, we, we know this is uh, calculated on the binarized predicted masks and ground truth masks, uh, like intersection of them over like union of them. And uh, also there is this accuracy measure, the proportion of pixels that have been correctly assigned to the object and background, object or background. Uh, they just put some thresholds sometimes like 0 0.5. So in, uh, in object segmentation, yeah. Uh, so they use this, uh, Birds data sets and flowers data sets. And as you see, their model, this E big began, big began, uh, is uh, it's very good. So they, they, the IOU accuracy and uh, the uh, max F measure are uh, like uh, giving us the really good results. Like this. And for this uh, salience detection, also uh, they use this uh, ECSD uh, data set and uh, DATS data sets and this DAT Omron data sets. Uh, so uh, here are some results about them. Again, uh, here their model is, 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 is very good. So here is a result, for example, about uh, this uh, this uh, salience detection. So the first images are uh, like the images. The second, the, the middle images are the ground truth masks and the bottom are masks produced by their method. So uh, they're very uh, successful. So uh, they also look at like this weakly supervised object localization problem, but they use uh, a, like newly uh, defined metric, max box accuracy. It is uh, like kind of a combination with like uh, with the masks and also the bounding box around this mask. 
so also they look at a, uh, another metric, uh, P cross AP. Uh, this is also a kind of a precision and recall, uh, a combination of precision and recall. Actually, like in our weekly supervised object localization track, we are not like looking these metrics. And actually these metrics are coming from a very early paper. And also, uh, they their uh, performance are not so good. I mean, not like beating the previous SOTA uh, about like the supervised object localization, but still working. Yeah. So let's con let's conclude this uh, paper. So they introduced an alternative research direction based on the high quality synthetic data from the off-the-shelf gun. They utilize the images produced by the Big B gun model, which is trained on ImageNet dataset. Uh, they explore Big B gun. They have discovered that its latent space semantics allows to produce the saliency masks for synthetic images automatically via latent space manipulations. And as shown in the experiment, this data is excellent source of supervision for discriminative computer vision models. The main feature of this approach is its simplicity and reproducibility, since this model doesn't rely on, rely on large number of components and hyperparameters. And on several common batch benchmarks, this method achieves superior performance compared to existing unsupervised competitors. Okay, these are some useful references that I put in here. I will share the, the presentation with you guys. Uh, there are some blog posts about uh, like big big, gun, big big guns and about uh, the interportal inter interpolation and vector arithmetic about the scans latent space. Uh, yeah, and also the papers. So thank you very much for listening. <laughs>